Oshkosh Media is government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And thanks for joining us for the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Radig, along with your City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mark Roloff. And Mark, thanks for being here. Great to be here, Andy. Well, in the first half of the show, we'll talk about some municipal news updates. And in the second half, we'll talk about some agenda highlights from the upcoming Tuesday, August 10th Common Council meeting. And we have a lot to get to today, Mark. Uh, it looks like we, we continue on with uh, road projects and different things, and, and there's some activity happening over at uh, Jackson Street. Yeah, well, this is something that's called a road diet. Okay. Uh, I was just talking with some folks this week, and uh, some of them had always wanted this type of road diet, so they were very pleased with this. But what a road diet is, is it's uh, reducing an existing four-lane road to a three-lane road with one lane in each direction and a single center turning lane. You may, have, you, know, you may have already noticed these. We have some on Murdoch, as well as Sawyer Street, as well as West 9th Avenue. So we've done these before, and it seems to have had a good calming effect on traffic. Mm -hmm. um, but this is uh, the residents in the Jackson Street corridor really wanted to see this happen. And we looked at the numbers and said, we think traffic can manage this. So what they're going to be doing is uh, there are going to be some speed feedback signs. Okay. What that means is, a little sign that says how fast you're going. So, mm -hmm. uh, and some uh, rectangular, rapidly flashing beacons for crosswalks. So, okay. all the construction you were looking at there, there, um, the crews have been out getting concrete redone, uh, sidewalk ramps, things like that. So, crossing will be easier over there. But, um, and so they're, that's what they've been doing this past week, just getting rid of some old sidewalk putting in the curb ramps and getting ready. So uh, the week of August 9th, you're going to see restriping to mm -hmm. the way I described it with the three lanes. So mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a change. Um, I expect some people will not have heard about it, but hopefully if you're watching City Manager's Report, you know that mm -hmm. this is going to be taking place. Mm -hmm. um, and there's always places on the city's website that have construction activity updates, not just for this project, but for all the different projects we're working on, whether it's West 9th Avenue or South Oregon Street uh, or, or CP. Right. Any of the projects we're doing this summer, you can check our website and get details on all that. But this will be next week's big project that uh, people will start to take notice and talk about at, uh, at work and at the coffee shop. Right, right. And we also continue to update folks on our uh, city Twitter feed as well as on the Oshkosh Media Facebook feed. So uh, folks can follow things there. Yeah, and I just want to make sure people know, be, traffic will be open through this construction, so please be patient with the lane restrictions. Mm -hmm. There'll be a little bit of lane restrictions, and uh, but it should be completed by the end of August. And I would even think it's probably even going to be earlier than that. So um, with the painting, so uh, within a week, you should probably see the, the lanes all back to the new normal there. Okay, very good. Well, recently we had the EAA Air Venture uh, happen in Oshkosh, the major event that happens in the summer here. And one of the things was the Aviation Business Park was promoted at uh, Air Venture this year. Our Community Development Department and the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation uh, along with, I believe, the Convention Visitors Bureau and the Chamber had a booth there. Mm -hmm. And they were really pushing the uh, Aviation Business Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, our friends right here at Oshkosh Media produced this video that was very well received by uh, EAA visitors. And I know that there were some prospects that were interested in perhaps uh, locating to Oshkosh. And, providing support services to the aviation industry that uh, even with EAA, they are just not here right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these videos that are shown here all come from activity here in Oshkosh. So I think we made a pretty good impression about, uh, uh, about what we can offer in Oshkosh. We've got amenities offered to businesses that may want to relocate there. This is a joint venture with Winnebago County and the city of Oshkosh. Um, and it really is a unique uh, a unique feature uh, mm -hmm. that that we offer the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's something specific to Oshkosh that you don't see very often. You know, and I know in general too, uh, Air Venture was was a, a great event this year. Oh yeah, we had over six hundred thousand people. I believe their official number is six hundred eight thousand. That's only the third time that attendance has exceeded six hundred thousand, uh, and it's uh, within five percent of. 2019's record total. So mm -hmm. it was pretty good. Um, you know, I know there was a lot of concern about how it would go this year, but I think mm -hmm. the aviation enth enthusiasts just wanted to get out. So uh, we we're happy. There were over 10,000 aircraft that arrived at Whitman Regional Airport uh, and other airports in East Central Wisconsin. And, mm -hmm. you know, 12,000 camping sites with 40,000 visitors. So it's amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a city within a city. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but what a lot of people don't realize is that economic impact. Andy. Right, right. You know, the economic impact for this one week is estimated at 170 million for the five counties in the Oshkosh region. And that's Winnebago County, Outagamie County, Fond du Lac County, Calumet, and Brown County. And that's just based on uh, 2017 estimates. So you can imagine that the impact is much greater. But this is a wonderful show that brings people from all over the world. Uh, we're certainly happy to have it here in Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I don't say so myself, I think we do a pretty good job at, uh, at uh, welcoming people and, uh, mm -hmm. and being good hosts. Sure. And I know transit is involved and, and the city really, really helps out with, with uh, many ways with that, that uh, convention. So uh, recently, uh, another event that happened uh, is the National Night Out. And uh, that's, that's a community building uh, type of activity with our police department. It's an annual event that promotes police community partnerships and neighborhood camaraderie. Mm -hmm. We've taken it a step further because the police have been wonderful in essentially founding this event. Um, but they've been very welcoming to, to get a little, schmooze it up a little bit. And mm -hmm. so it's an opportunity for the public safety agencies, both police and fire, mm -hmm. to showcase their equipment, but start conversation with neighbors. Uh, and as well, it enhances the relationship between the neighbors amongst themselves and with law enforcement. So, you know, the things you see out there and on the video is, you know, some of our officers with kids. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was out at a couple neighborhood associations. I, I played basketball with a couple teens. They were very kind to me, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, there were bouncy houses that they tried to talk me into going into, but I wasn't going to be, uh, I wasn't going to get squeezed into, a, into the front door of it. But it's neighbors talking to neighbors and, and just uh, getting to know each other, especially yeah. after COVID, get yeah. reacquainted with people. Um, and we probably had about 10 locations throughout the city. Mm -hmm. So that was really exciting to see neighbors get out and talk to one another. And I think, you know, with the recent stuff going on with COVID, people were still backing off a little bit, just being a little bit careful. But boy, they were happy to be out. And I was happy to, 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 to talk to people and hear what they had to say. Um, we didn't have the national night out a year ago. Right. So just like we talked about earlier with EAA, everybody mm -hmm. was so happy to be together and uh, just talking. Uh, it, it really helps gel the neighborhoods and gets them to know one another. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was neat that uh, an officer could be uh, on a call for service that involves shooting hoops with neighborhood kids. I thought that was pretty neat. It was a lot of fun. So. And uh, I encourage people to... Uh, to get involved in those and, and go to these events. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll inform uh, everyone next year when, when it comes up again. Okay, another exciting thing is the Oshkosh Food Co-op is open in downtown Oshkosh and they've have had all sorts of things going on lately. Yeah, they've had a couple. They had a ribbon cutting event uh, just on August 3rd, which was really wonderful. And then they had an opening ceremony on July 22nd. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the co-op is a member owned full service grocery store with an emphasis on local products and serving the community's needs. Mm -hmm. um, they target about 20% of its sales from locally sourced goods from growers, producers, and farmers within 100 miles of the state of Wisconsin. So mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, I encourage you to go through and take a look and just see. It's a little different, uh, but familiar. It's a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Probably looks a little bit more like neighborhood grocery stores that you saw when you were younger but sure. it's got the it's got the modern splash on it i mm -hmm. checked out the food bar on the night i was supposed to cook dinner last week <laughs> and uh, you know I'll, I'll endorse the the, uh, the hot food bar but um 
uh, for those of you who don't know about it, it's located in what's called the Brio Building. That's on the first level at the corner of Jackson Street and Pearl Avenue. And what's so important about that location is that before the food co-op was there, downtown Oshkosh was what was considered a food desert by the Department of Agriculture, which means that there's not uh, a grocery store within pretty much walking distance mm -hmm. of uh, of your home. Mm -hmm. um, so it provides a much needed service. So I'm sure the university community is going to love it, but also right. people who live in the downtown area, now they can walk to a grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, it's going to add about 30 jobs to the local economy. Um, there's about a team of 10 full-time and 20 part-time associates. Uh, Jeff Theron is the, uh, the general manager there. Mm -hmm. um, he helped me pick out the food the, the night I, it was my turn to buy uh, mm -hmm. or cook dinner. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Jeff took really good care of me. Mm -hmm. uh, the store hours are Monday through Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Sunday. So okay. it's, it's, it sounds like we're doing a commercial, but this really is something important for the downtown and I'm so excited to see it. It's gonna add vibrancy to the downtown, and I think you're gonna see more activity throughout the downtown as a result of something like this there. Mm -hmm. And they have some unique products, and, and uh, there are a lot of draws there to, to come back and, and see what they have that's new, and, and fresh vegetables and everything else. Yeah, check it out. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, another asset that we have in Oshkosh is the Oshkosh Public Museum. And they have a new exhibit that's open, the uh, Titanic, the Wisconsin Connection. This is a really cool exhibit. I got to get a little uh, view of it. Um, it's running through October 13th, so there's plenty of time to go see it. Um, but it, it truly does put some perspective on how the Titanic had an impact in Wisconsin. Uh, there were 50 people on that ship uh, from, that had Wisconsin ties in all classes. And it tells a story of 20 of those passengers uh, specifically for uh, the, the museum exhibit there. Mm -hmm. um, there were some really cool artifacts that come straight from the Titanic. The treasure hunting that had been done that is owned by the group that now does it. Uh, there were banknotes I found, which I thought was really oh. the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. Banknotes from Wisconsin banks, so clearly demonstrating that uh, the Wisconsin residents were on the ship. Mm -hmm. And well preserved as well, those oh, banknotes. And, mm -hmm. and how they were stored and were really something right, else. So right. mm -hmm. you can get tickets online through the museum's website. Mm -hmm. Technically, we try to limit the numbers, but if you uh, order them online, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You'll have no problem. Mm -hmm. And again, the exhibit's open through uh, October 13th, and I would encourage you to take a look at it. And uh, it's the museum staff knows tons about it. We've got great volunteers who have learned a lot, but the EM group is the salvager and owner of the Titanic artifacts. They're the ones that have helped put this on for us. Mm -hmm. We encourage folks to check out the Oshkosh Public Museum website, which you're taking a look at there, and you can get your tickets there and you can learn more about the exhibition. Okay, recently the Oshkosh Public Works Department recorded an informational program about the, the 2022 Capital Improvement Program. So uh, I had the, the pleasure to sit down with James Robbie and, and we went through and talked about the upcoming projects a little bit. So, uh, so this is a way for folks to become informed about uh, what's coming up. Yeah, our Capital Improvement Program, known as a CIP, it, it talks about all the different projects we do. Um, Public Works is, is heavily in there. Uh, that's street utility improvements, including our stormwater utility, our wastewater utility, uh, water projects. And we used to just um, have these meetings and I, just a handful of people showed up. Mm -hmm. We decided to you know, basically go virtual with it, get it out there for anybody in the public to see. Uh, we did send letters to affected property owners for street projects that are coming up in 2022 mm -hmm. and some of those projects include Algoma Boulevard from Wisconsin Street to Congress Avenue, Rosalia Street from Washington Avenue to CP Avenue, Vine Avenue from High to Algoma in the University area mm -hmm. and East 9th Avenue from South Main Street to Pioneer Drive. And you can take a look at our uh, website. There's an interactive website in the Public Works section of our city website shows all this stuff. You can get so much information uh, if you're interested about different street projects. And I know usually what I hear from people is, well, what about 
my street or a street that I drive uh, very commonly, mm -hmm. when's that going to get done? The answer is typically right there in the capital improvement plan because we've got many years of capital improvements there that you can take a look at. So uh, you can view this presentation on our GovTV website or our Oshkosh Media YouTube channel, but you can also look at a lot of the interactive stuff right there on our website. And I think you'll get most of the information you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And people might think that the street projects are just kind of randomly chosen, but actually there's a lot of thought and uh, uh, background that leads to these projects before, before they come to be developed. Exactly, because it's a lot more than just the street service. It's all the underlying utilities. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got utilities that still date back to the 1800s. Right. So, wow. uh, you know, when we have those, we really got to fix it. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great learning experience. Okay. All right, and then we should touch on uh, COVID and uh, where we're at with things. I know that a lot of things seem to be changing lately with uh, different uh, uh, guidelines and rules. Uh, what are you hearing, Mark, from our public health people? Well, the numbers are trending up in our area. Um, I asked for a little snapshot. It's probably similar to where it was back this past February, mm -hmm. right after the vaccine was starting to get out, but also dates back to about a snapshot close to where it was going on in September right after Labor Day. Yeah. Um, in September, the trend was going up. In February, the trend was going down. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long this trend's going to last, but it certainly causes concern because mm -hmm. if you look at the CDC guidelines, the Center for Disease Control, um, we're what's called in the substantial category. And so with that, um, normally we'd be saying we should be uh, masking up again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody is interested in doing that again. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, uh, you know, I don't welcome that, but the very real possibility is if we don't start reversing this trend, we could find ourselves putting ourselves with, uh, you know, at least requiring masks at City Hall and, and uh, city meetings and things like that. Um, but my best advice is you know, encourage your friends and family to get vaccines, get yourself vaccinated. Mm -hmm. You create that herd immunity that is so important to make this happen. The Delta variant's really clobbering us, mm -hmm. um, and it's even hitting people who've gotten the vaccine. So mm -hmm. the vaccine's still important, it'll protect you. So check a look at the wcvaccine.org website that the Winnebago County Health Department's put out. It gives you information on where you can get vaccines uh, and where you can get tested, so if you mm -hmm. think you have symptoms, please get tested to make sure. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, the uh, site at Sunnyview is closed uh, during the week that we're taping this because of the county fair happening, but they plan on opening everything back up next week and they have their walk-in Wednesday clinic at the Sunnyview. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, make calls and you know, there, there are places you can still get vaccines. Okay, very good. Well, thanks for that update, Mark, and it, I think that's about the time we have for the first half of the show today. And please stay tuned, and we'll be right back with some agenda highlights from the upcoming Tuesday, August 10th Common Council meeting. You're watching the City Manager's Report. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. And welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Radig, along with City Manager Mark Roloff. Let's take a, take a look at some upcoming agenda highlights from the August 10th Common Council meeting. Uh, Mark will be starting off the meeting with a, a presentation, uh, and there are some different folks. Uh, I, I know the first one is about the um, development over at the Sawdust District. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we have a couple of projects coming up. Uh, you may recall that we had uh, some proposals that we reviewed with the Redevelopment Authority and they uh, awarded a, uh, a, the proposal to T-Wall Enterprises, that's a firm based out of the Madison area, mm -hmm. and they showed some of the projects that they've done. Uh, they're anticipating making a request for 
tax increment financing dollars. Um, you can see the area. This is a good overview of, of what they're proposing. Mixed use with some good open public space. Uh, and they showed some comparables from Middleton that they've done. So we're going to hear from them. And then the, uh, the other one is the uh, redevelopment of the former Smith School. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be some apartments, and they're going to uh, just make a presentation about what they uh, are proposing to do, and they will also be making an application for tax increment financing because this helps bridge the gap on uh, development costs that are more costly when you're in a more challenging redevelopment area than, say, out at what's called a greenfield or you know a, a rural site. So mm -hmm. um, anxious to hear their presentations and where they plan to go from there. Okay. And then following that, there's a, a license hearing. And uh, what's the purpose of the hearing? Anytime we have a, uh, an establishment, a bar or restaurant that has not used their liquor license for a period of time, the council's directed us to bring it back to them for consideration of non-renewal. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, they ask to get their license renewed, but they still don't operate it. Um, so uh, the business in this case uh, is a business on Algoma Boulevard, and they haven't been open for about two years now. Mm -hmm. So the council will uh, hear from the, uh, the business about what their plans are. Mm -hmm. uh, if it looks like they're planning to stay open, the council may uh, vote to extend the and renew the license, otherwise they would revoke it or not renew it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it would go back into a pool of uh, liquor licenses that would be available for anybody, including that very same business, to, to use when they're ready to use it. Mm -hmm. So the, the city does have licenses available for folks that would come along to request one? Yeah, we have about a half dozen licenses right now. Okay. Um, the council's picked up the pace on this. And I think what happens is then they're available for anybody who's ready to go. And certainly if somebody is interested in pursuing a business that may need a liquor license, we want to make sure that one's available for them mm -hmm. so that they're not being hoarded by other people waiting for something to happen. We want to do it for people who are ready to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Well, and then uh, this is this, the busy time of year with special events, and we have quite a, quite a list of special events uh, coming up for approval. Uh, among them is a uh, Oshkosh Jazz Festival. Yeah, this one is scheduled for September 18th and 19th. It's the Cultural Fine Arts and Jazz Society. Uh, they're going to be using William Steiger Park, the boatwork site, and the Riverwalk for this jazz festival on September 18th and 19th. This is not to be confused with another group that is doing a jazz uh, festival on uh, August 28th, which is a Saturday, in the, right after the farmer's market in the 400 block of Main Street. So okay. I would say look for both of those, but if you're a jazz aficionado, you're going to get a little bit of uh, several options for jazz uh, within the next two months, and we're excited about both of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, excited to see all those special events coming back this year. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, later in the agenda, we have some new resolutions. Uh, one of them is a pilot study uh, regarding uh, phosphorus reduction in the city. Does the city have a problem with uh, phosphorus? The city itself doesn't have a phosphorus problem, but the Fox uh, Wolf watershed does. And okay. uh, it's kind of been put on cities that have treatment plants to do something about it. I can tell you that the water that our sewer treatment plant puts back into the, the Fox Wolf system, mm -hmm. Lake Winnebago system, is cleaner than the water we take out of the system. Okay. So we are, we're a net improver of water quality. Mm -hmm. and um, But because there are no requirements on farmers regarding phosphorus discharge, um, uh, municipalities are often asked to make the water cleaner than they, they took out of, took out of the, uh, the lake Okay. because they they got to improve phosphorus control mm -hmm. and it's it's a an area that can be measured it's it's difficult to measure it uh, in a rural area but you can right. measure it coming in and out of a treatment plant so mm -hmm. um, this pilot study is something cuz we're under some orders from the Department of Natural Resources to get some things done so we're going to try this pilot project and see if we can avoid some major capital costs at one point we were looking at having to invest $30 million in our sewer treatment plant. I want to avoid that. Yeah. Uh, so if this pilot project works, maybe we can find a more cost-effective way to help the environment reduce phosphorus. But we're not the producer. We're mm -hmm. just we're the cleaner-upper okay. of the whole process. Okay. All right. Well, we'll look for more information about that, that pilot study. 
Okay, Mark, later in the agenda we have some uh, other items. Uh, there, there's some upcoming budget workshops again with the council. And uh, what, what is the focus of these upcoming workshops? Well, budget season is upon us, but before mm. we present the budget to council, we really want to prepare them with a lot of information. Okay. And we've had a workshop already where we've talked about capital improvements. Um, the one that's scheduled for, uh, it's a fifth Tuesday in August, so we've got an extra meeting date. Okay. Uh, it'll be held at 5 p.m. And what we do is... Uh, some early projections on labor costs, uh, particularly health insurance, because health insurance costs have, have really increased. Uh, get council a base of where we think we're going to be mm -hmm. both year end for 2021 as well as looking ahead to 2022, and then get some direction from council on priorities. So that's the budget workshop that's done in August. And then once we submit the, uh, the proposed 2022 budget mm -hmm. to council, uh, in October, then they give us two full days mm -hmm. where they are here. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. And remember, mm -hmm. council members are part-time. Mm -hmm. They give two full days out of their regular day to, to go over the proposed budget. And that will be on October 18th and 19th. So look for those dates. Look for those. Uh, we'll be talking about those more. Uh, but I would say around, uh, around October 10th, the budget will be delivered to council. So they got a week, week and a half to take a look at it before they really start uh, getting their hands dirty with it. Okay. And, and folks can look for updates on those, those workshop meetings. Uh, Oshkosh Media Gov TV will be providing coverage and uh, uh, can look for more information there. Okay, and then there's a, an item to discuss marijuana regulations, and are there any feasible options with this? Well, the, uh, the city attorney and the police chief were asked by council to take a look at this issue and what options exist, and I mm -hmm. think there, there may be some options in terms of the fine that may be in place, but we're prohibited from uh, doing something such as legalizing marijuana because the state preempts local municipalities from doing that. So we can we can we could change our local fine, mm -hmm. um, but there are still state laws that we're governed by. Mm -hmm. But it gives the officer the ability to exercise discretion. Do I cite you for a local ordinance, or do I uh, write you up and and perhaps arrest you on a criminal violation for a state violation? Okay. We're going to talk about those things and and get some direction from council. If they want us to change the ordinance, they'll give us some direction at this meeting, and you'll see it at a future meeting at that point. Okay, we'll watch for that. All right, and then I know that the American Rescue Plan Act has been uh, discussed quite a bit, and I know that part of that is that uh, there have been some potential uses for those funds. Is, is that still the case? Well, there are certain restrictions that are in there, and the council uh, asked me to solicit proposals from different groups, mm -hmm. uh, individuals and everything, and so we've been compiling that, and I have some things I think we can show the council for them to, to give some thought to. Um, I'm not ready with any specific recommendations, but I don't know if council necessarily wants a full-blown, how are you going to spend the $20.5 million? It's right. more about where do you see some of these things going? And then in turn, I'll be asking council, what priorities do you want to set on that? And uh, because of recent events with you know things spiking, I don't necessarily think we want to commit totally to... Uh, spending all this money. We got to see what's going to happen and if there are any other issues that come up after the fact. Okay. I want to be ready. We have until 2020, the end of 2024 to decide how we're going to spend the money. So let's not uh let's mm -hmm. not be too hasty. Mm -hmm. A lot of flexibility with this. Yeah, I think there is. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Well, I think our time is up, Mark. Uh thank you so much for sharing all this info with us. It's been a pleasure, Andy. Thanks. All right, you bet. Again, that Common Council meeting is coming up uh, this Tuesday, August 10th at 6 p.m., and that is in person at City Hall with the option for remote participation by the public. You can watch it live on GovTV, which is Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, and streaming on YouTube and OshkoshMedia.org. Or you can listen to it on the radio, Oshkosh FM 101.9, which is also online, and on the TuneIn Radio app for phones and tablets. And you can always catch your uh, favorite programming using your streaming device, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV. Just search for Oshkosh Media on, on the app. And you can always visit our YouTube channel for government meeting archives and the full library of Oshkosh Media programming. Thanks again for joining us today, and join us again in two weeks for another City Manager's Report. We'll see you next time.